what's up everybody? Issei here bringing you another video. This one going to be my tournament wrap up for Tokaigi 2017. So I was flown out there by Nico Nico slash Dowango. I don't really know what company it was out of those two because uh, Dowango owns Nico Nico. But so I was flown out to Japan for 10 days. I left on the 2nd of February, uh, got there on the 3rd because, you know, traveling and dates and time zones and stuff. And I got back the 13th. Uh, Tokaigi itself was on the 11th and the 12th of February and it was an absolutely amazing time. I have never been to Japan before so this was my first time there and so I got a bunch of new experiences. I went to the city in Tokyo. We were in Chiba which I'm not sure if that's like a prefecture or like the city itself because uh, I'm an ignorant American but I went there and it was just a very nice time. So I got there Friday. Uh, I met up with Vaiseth at the airport because we landed about the same time and we got to the Airbnb where Nairo and Paradin were. Nairo was there early to try to qualify for Tokaigi at the Umebura. Uh, which we were going to the next day. So we obviously got there, we got some food. By the way, curry in Japan is super good. Curry and yakiniku and yakitori and beef bowl. Beef bowl is so good! Anyway, so the next day I go to the Umebura, which I couldn't enter because I had already, you know, been qualified for Tokaigi, and this was just for those people, so top three made it in. Uh, but I did get to play a lot of friendlies with a lot of my fans because apparently I'm extremely popular in Japan, which is one of the reasons I was invited out. I was able to just play on a friendly setup after pools were done, and I had like literally back-to-back -back friendlies until until top like five or top top six in the tournament and it was just the whole time was just friendlies 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 everyone in Japan is so good I learned so much from a bunch of different players uh, including Pikachu players I learned a lot from the other Pikachu players there mostly the fact that my quick attacks were very mediocre compared to theirs and they have they're super good at it uh, with really slight angles and misdirection that I'm not nearly as good at as them so I have a lot to learn uh, you know, I played a lot, just a bunch of people in general. Uh, it was nice meeting all the fans. There were some people that were so, so nervous to meet me. They were like shaking when they were when I was taking pictures with them. Uh, they also were super happy I was in Japan in the first place just because they didn't expect me to ever be there. And they were like, oh my god, I've been a fan of yours for so long, You're like since Brawl, and I can't believe you're finally here and I get to finally meet you, and this is awesome. And, you know, fanboys and fangirls alike, they were just super cute and gracious that I was there and I was super happy to play them. Uh, and, you know, I do know a little bit of Japanese, so there was some communication. Obviously, I had base up with me for the most part to translate, uh, but I did, you know, I, I know what to say like before matches, after matches, thank you to small little things. Uh, you know, call people like really good, things like that. And so it was it was definitely possible to communicate with them just enough that I, like for pretty much what I needed um, between like words and hand signals. So pretty much everyone understood what I was trying to say for the most part. Um, you know, now I ended up winning that Umebura. I played just a bunch of people, it was super fun. Uh, I got food with a bunch of people after that. It was, it was just, everything about this trip was just so good. So we went to Shinjuku a lot, which is like the downtown area of near where we were, which was incredibly nice. There were so many arcades there, and oh my god, the arcades were so much fun. There were so many rhythm games and just fun games and a million uh, UFO catchers, which was essentially like a crane game. Oh my god, there was so much of everything, and it was so enjoyable to just be there. And like, I would spend so much money in arcades if I lived there. Like, I understand why, you know, you see the videos online of like the broken Japanese people, I like the rhythm games, because I would just go there and spend hours there a week just getting better at the games that I like and so I completely understand why people are so good at them but men I saw some ridiculous stuff if you follow me on snapchat you would know that by the way if you don't follow me on snapchat follow me on snapchat also uh, other social media that I'll put on the screen right now so it was just like it was just very enjoyable just to be in that culture see everything you know take pictures just enjoy myself because I was pretty I was in a pretty low stress environment for the most part because again wasn't playing in Umebura I honestly like I wanted to do well at Tokaigi but at the same time it's an invitational that was more so for fun for me than just like super super try hard because it's not like I want a trophy right but it wasn't like crazy like I wasn't grinding like eight hours a day when I was in Japan like I honestly didn't play that much Smash while I was in Japan you know you know, I played at Umebura, I played at Nanaki's house, who's someone that lived near the Airbnb like two different times for a couple hours each. I went to Niotono's place for like two, two and a half hours and I played with uh, Keron Pika and Kirihara and Rain for a little bit. And then like, so, like a very little bit on Friday at the hotel, like for maybe four hours and that was it. Like I played maybe 10, 12 hours, 13 hours of Smash the entire week, or besides the Saturday where I played for like five or six against all those different people. So I really didn't play that much Smash and I was actually really happy about that because it allowed me to explore Japan. You know, I went to Akihabara, I went to, as I said, Shinjuku, uh, I went to like these other places like when Base Up was running errands because I was like, I just want to see stuff. And you know, it was nice to see like all the public transit as well as, you know, just all the people and the walking and the, just the scenery in general was really nice and I got to try a bunch of different foods 
and just understand really how the culture works, at least more so than what I understood before, which was really, really nice. So we were in the Airbnb from Friday to Wednesday night, or I guess Wednesday night was the last night I slept there. So Thursday, we went to the different area, so where Tokaigi was being held, which was in Chiba. Um, there was like a specific city, but I think that was the prefecture. Uh, and we had hotels for that, which was kind of nice because after six days of spending 100% of your time with someone else, it's nice to just be able to be like, I'm gonna go in my hotel room for two hours and just not be with anyone and just like listen to music, whatever you do, do whatever you want. Uh, you know, just being able to just like decompress like that was really nice after the long while of just constantly being with other people. Um, and you know, Dolongo and or Dolongo slash Nika Nika, the companies, uh, were very gracious with what they offered. You know, we had our own hotel rooms each. Uh, obviously, the flight was a thing, and it was just like everything about it was just so professional and super high quality. And I was really happy about that. I met uh, Mr. Wada. He works for Dolongo. I think he was one of the people responsible for you know Tokagi as a whole, but like kind of like our division of it. So like he was making sure we were okay, making sure we were happy, things like that. And it was just really nice to just have someone that's like that high up in a company really care. And he was a super nice guy and super friendly, um, you know, always bowing, always, you know, showing respect and everyone, you know, we showed respect back. And he just showed us around that little area and was just super, it was just a super gracious host and I was very, very happy for that. Um, at Tokaigi itself, uh, I got ninth, I beat uh, Kamame 2-0 in the first round, and then I lost to Kirihara and then Ken. So uh, Kamame, you know, Mega Man Pikachu is in Pikachu's favor, everyone would pretty much agree. Uh, it's probably 6-4 or something like that. So it wasn't like super difficult, I mean Kamame is obviously an amazing player, but you know, I just was able to do like the specific things. First off, he didn't ban Lilat in for game one, and so that was nice because I was suddenly like, oh I have Lilat game one. So I won game one and then I won on Smashville game two just because I had a lead early. And you know, I was able to milk it, I think is what I remember. Uh, against Kirihara, you know, I was winning a lot, by a lot the first game, uh, Pikachu Rosa. And then he raw backers me, and like he forward throws me off stage, and then like raw backers me at like 70 and I die. Like Luma just scoops me from like super far away, and I wasn't expecting it. And so he had the lead now, and so I had to like approach a Rosalina, which is very difficult, obviously. Uh, so I ended up losing that game. I went Mewtwo game two, and I played very well, and I won. And then game three, I was again playing very well. I took his first stock first, but. You know, I got him to like 60 or 70 on my second stock, and then suddenly he grabbed me at 10, and I went to 80 just from jungling, and it was amazing, and then he was able to just close it out. Uh, you know, it was just pretty unfortunate for me because I feel like if I had beat Kirihara, I would have had to play Nairo, and that was just how the bracket worked, and I'm very confident versus Nairo, so I think I would have won that, and then I could have at least got top three because I'm not saying I'm going to beat Abadango or whoever came from losers, but it wouldn't have been very nice. Like, I feel like I could have beat Kirihara, beat Nairo, maybe beat Abadango, you know, run back of UGC, cons considering we were playing for, like a few hours in friendlies the day before, and for the most part he was winning, but that was more so at the beginning, and then at the end I started winning a lot more. Uh, so I was very confident in that, but unfortunately I didn't get to do that, and then I lost to Ken who in my opinion is the best Sonic in the world. Uh, you know, Como plays Cloud as well, and I think he's just better than 6WX, who I would feel like is the best North American Sonic. Uh, so just in general, just Ken is super smart, and he's really good at the matchups that I play because he plays with Kedon a lot, the uh, Pikachu, that's very, very good. And he also plays with Abadango enough, so he understands both of the matchups that I play. And, you know, while I understand the Sonic matchup from, like, a theoretical standpoint, like, I don't have that much experience because, like, I play True Blue, and, you know, the level difference between True Blue and Ken is, like, very, very high. And while I played 6WX, and, you know, they play completely differently, and, you know, Ken was just able to just break down everything that I wanted to do and just punish me for it. It was, it was amazing. Like, uh, the unfortunate thing was I actually, like, I literally walked off stage after I lost to Kirihara, and then I had to immediately play Ken. Like, I walked off the stage onto a setup that I had to play, and I don't really like that in general. You know, I like getting a few minutes to decompress. Not saying I would have beat Ken, because I probably would have lost, because he was just playing way better than me that day. He beat, like, everyone. He lost to Mr. R on one, and then won 13th, 9th, 7th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, and took a set from Nara. So he won the 7 or 8 sets in a 16-man bracket, so it was just, it was amazing by him. He played incredibly well. Uh, he 2 out I think, everyone is, until Sue for 5th place, so he was just, or 4th place, or maybe, I don't know, he might have lost a, a game for, at the 5th place level, I don't remember. So either way, he did incredibly well at the tournament, Nairo obviously ended up winning, so yay USA, even though technically he was representing Japan because he won an Umebura qualifier. Uh, you know, all the invited players, so me, Ally, and Mr. R got ninth, and DeBuzz got 7th. Uh, so it was just, it was, it was just funny that like, it's like, yay, we got invited and we all got bodied. Uh, just because that's kind of how the, uh, the world works, you know, just, it was very, the Japanese players are just so strong in general, and they play very different than the US players. They're very much more calculated, and they work really, really well with the space behind them. Uh, so, you know, as me as an aggressive player, it's kind of annoying to approach someone when they're so comfortable, you know, backing up. 
uh, kind of like when I had to play Captain L, but you know, I'm slowly starting to figure it out. Uh, obviously, I'm also being more patient, uh, you know, recently. But the biggest thing for me personally, this whole trip, was the fact that I got to play with Kettle and Pika, who is the super technical vine combo master, uh, essentially, of the Pikachu. Uh, so he's the one that always did the footstool stuff and the Dreamland quick attack footstools and like all these weird combos that were crazy and I'm like these don't work and then he showed me no they actually work and I'm like oh man this is amazing it's just so it's super fun you know you get super long strings with up airs which are nice uh, you obviously get the footstool extensions and so I've been doing that obviously you saw me probably tweet about it uh, earlier today when I was streaming because I woke up really early because jet lag so I woke up at like 5 in the morning and then at 5.30 I'm like you know what I'm gonna get up and stream uh, so I got a bunch of different combos with the up airs and it was just really nice and so I'm finally learning how to like use my character correctly I feel like because there's so many things that I do that are correct but there are so many things I don't do at all you know better quick attacks up airs like they're doing it uh, just there's so much to learn as Pikachu and so I'm so looking forward to what I'm going to be doing in the future I obviously learned a bunch from Abadongo as well so Mewtwo you know mainly the main thing is like double jump combo so like down tilt double jump up air fair double jump up air up air things like that when you could ordinarily only get one up air so it's like small optimizations, and then footstool out of shield, which will be a, which will be a thing. So like footstool disable out of shield, kind of like how Kamehameha does the footstool metal blade drop. But I mean, yeah, it was just really good experience. You know, the city itself was really fun, and you know, I just got to spend a whole bunch of time with not only the Japanese players, but Vaseth, Nairo, Paradin, Ally, Mr. R, and Debuzz, and it was just really fun to hang out with them. Uh, just because you know they're they're good guys, and I hung out with Debuzz at the last house, and so I already kind of like knew how he worked, but he was super different in Japan. Uh, you know, I got, you know, time with Ramen and Ally as well, and then you know, we're all just like a bunch of like, we were just messing with each other the whole time, and it was just really fun, and it was a very, very pleasant uh, experience, and yeah, that's going to be about it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, social media, Panda, and partner stuff is down below. Uh, look out later this week for, I think I'm going to do like, essentially what every, what, what every character can do uh, out of the Footstool Metal Blade, so like if you have Mega Man's Metal Blade, so I'll make a video about that, and yeah, I'll see you all next time. Oh, bye bye.